What's up guys? How's it going? This is Easy Things to Draw and uh, today I'm going to continue on this uh, this kind of like a series that I'm going with. I'm kind of going over a lot of the very very technical shading aspects um, and a, a part of that aspect at least with the technical part of it is that you, uh, we're going to be requiring a perspective grid. Uh, if you don't know how to make one go back. I'm going to link my video on the screen. I really really suggest that you um, Kind of look at that and learn how to make it. It's a really, really good idea to know how to make it. Um, or maybe learn how to make it once and then, you know, just kind of maybe keep notes on it so you, you can remind yourself later on. Um, but if you want the shortcut for this video, um, I'm going to, I scan this and I'll put a link somewhere on the page here for you to kind of get one and print it out. Um, you know, you might have to readjust it depending on your, uh, the printer that you're printing it off on. But I'll put this exact one, I'll scan it. I already scanned it and uh, kind of have it for you. So let me go over really quick what the point of the perspective grid is. Um, it's to keep things in line um, when you're doing this stuff. Where we're doing very like technical shadows, um, every little line, because the, like certain lines will travel a long distance. If that's off a little bit, it'll be a little bit off if you're doing a tiny, tiny object, right? But the bigger the object, it's going to go way off if you don't have a grid, if you don't have a perspective grid. So what we do is we made this just with pen and we're, and we're using computer paper, regular computer paper. And uh, let me ditch the paper below it actually. We did this with uh, regular computer paper and uh, we're using it underneath whatever we're drawing. We're gonna be drawing boxes mostly, uh, boxes and organic shapes. Uh, but I wanna take this step by step because small chunking information is like a big part of learning it and ingraining it. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you an exercise of how to practice uh, becoming better with the grid that, that you already have. And I would say uh, constructing uh, freeform boxes would be a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, I'm using a, a Zebra F301. Um, you can use this with a pencil too. You can do whatever you want. I suggest doing it with a pen because it's so unforgiving. Do you know what I mean? It's very unforgiving. Uh, if you mess up, it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? And it teaches your brain to kind of not mess up as much, if that makes sense. My line drawing didn't clean. I mean, it, it's still messy every now and then, right? But it, it doing this really cleaned up a lot of stuff. You know, when I have that horrible habit of being messy, you know what I mean? Um, really helps. This, this, this is like the exercise that for me personally helped me the most. So... Um, as you can see, hopefully you can see this on camera. If I'm looking at it, you can kind of, I don't know, it kind of appears on camera. So I'm using that grid. And it can be above the horizon line or below. That's the thing is you're living in this like grid world. You know what I mean? We made this kind of grid world. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a box anywhere on the page here. But I'm going to be using that grid. And I'm going to be using pen right here and I'm going to try to keep it as neat as I can with that pen. Let's say I have that box, right? Straight up and down, that's not a big deal. The bottom portion of that box is, I'm gonna follow one of these lines, if you can see behind there. God, I hope this comes up on camera. I'm gonna follow that, and I don't have to ride that line. It doesn't have to be on that line, but it has to be in this, it has to be in alignment and parallel to the, not parallel, it has to be in alignment with that line I created below it. So this is the bottom of that box. Let me zoom in a little bit. So that's an alignment that that bottom, right? And then I'm gonna pull up obviously another vertical. And I can see the vertical line set behind it. And I'll just cap off the top. And that top is also gonna be in line with that perspective grid, because I can see it below it. Um, so as you can tell with pen, you have to take more care. 
And now I'm gonna have the back of the box. How long is that box gonna be? It's up to me. You know what I mean? Just a free form box, whatever it is. But where I pull that line, I'm gonna ride the other lines if you can see them, right? There's some going off that direction and there's some going the other direction. There's two, van two vanishing points off, totally off the page. That's what this is, you know what I mean? This is not, I guess, it's perspective, but it's not as ordinary, you know? It wouldn't be like drawing the giant buildings. You take, you're doing it with objects, you know? So the, the perspective lines are more like real life. Um, the, sorry, the vanishing points are more like real life. They're way off the page, you know? And I'm, I'm gonna have the back of that box. And let's just say it's in between those two lines. I'm gonna have to approximate what the same direction these are going, you know what I mean? I have to align those. Let's say I want it that far. I think it's a little bit high, in my opinion, but it it'll it'll work for this purpose. And I'm gonna pull down. Is this on the page? There we go. I'm gonna pull down, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna have to connect those lines as well. This is an exercise. Um, one of the things I learned going to Art Center, oops, one of the things I learned going to Art Center is it's almost like it's almost like it's fifteen percent uh, knowledge, like knowing, and, in terms of learning, it's almost like fifteen percent knowing what to do, and then it's going to be like eighty-five percent. Uh, applying what you learned. See when I pull that line, that line's gonna go that way. Because I'm following that grid. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's like 15% knowledge and 85% like actually applying what you're doing. You know what I mean? That ap application is so important. And I'm gonna pull this line back there and I can see it's kind of going back there. So I'm gonna so I'm looking at this line right here. I'll even do it so you can see it. See, hold on. Like you can see that line, and I'm seeing this line, and they're going, you know, in the back. And I'm going to approximate between that line and that line. I'm going to make them that same angle because it's fanning out equally. I'm going to make it as equal as I can, and pull it back. Oops, easy. You're supposed to turn the paper, but uh, all right, let me turn the paper a little bit just to help me. Oh yeah, one other thing. It's up to you, but at this point, I recommend you do not use a ruler at all. Do not use a ruler. You can do this with a ruler if you want. See, it's kind of bubbly right there. That kind of been for imperfection. Let me zoom out. Yeah, I got some imperfection there. But that's just the cost of it. And uh, I'm pretty cold too. So like I'm cold, I'm not warmed up. That's uh, just the name of the game. And then I can take this box. By freeform box, I meant this is your own decision. And I'm gonna divide that. I'm gonna look at that line. Where's that other line? There's those two lines, there's these lines. So I'm gonna divide that box based on that line right there. I'm gonna divide it. And then this pulls, the verticals are pretty much straight up and down. It's the horizontals that have the two, you know, that perspective, the, the two vanishing points, you know? Anyways, and then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another little box on top of this. And I, this is, again, I'm just picking any random box. Let's say I wanna make a tiny thin box on top of that. Is that on camera? Yeah, okay, cool. So I'll make a tiny thin box on top of that. I'm going to do that. Let's say it's coming up to the edge. Right there. And I'm going to follow the grid line. I'm looking at this grid line over here. I'm going to mark it because I don't think it's obvious on the page. Can you see that? These are the grid lines behind it. I'm looking, I can see it through the paper. I'm only doing that so you guys can see it. And I am going to close that box, that little side of the box off right here. See, so yeah, I'm looking at this angle, this angle. And what would that angle be in between if they're all pulling to the same source? Now I'm going to go back here to the bottom of the box. 
Oops. Going back here to the bottom of the box. I'm moving around a lot, but what you should do, you should turn the paper. <laughs> Me, I, 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 mean, I can kind of turn the paper, but for the most part, for the demo, I'm, I can't. So I'm kind of like moving all over the place. I, should, I would be doing this. I'd be doing that. And, uh, okay, pull that back there. I'm pulling that in my head there. Well, not really. It, wouldn't, it really wouldn't show up. On that, and where would that close off? It wouldn't be flat. It would be uh, this line. I'd be writing that perspective grid line. See that? Where's the other one? The other one's up here somewhere. So this angle from here to here would be between this angle and this angle. No, that's too extreme. See, that's too extreme. Okay, there we go. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Now I'm going to get the top back portion of the box because we're still looking down on it. See this right here following these two. You know, it, it, there's definitely some forgiveness too when we, when you're doing slivers. Sometimes it's just a sliver, right? Just make it generally right and then that, that should be fine. And let me, just for the heck of it, let me get the back of that box. All right, let's get back into it. And I'm already seeing this massive error right here. This, um, where is this? This line should be a little more like that. It looks like it's getting bigger as it goes back, and that's a mistake. Something like that. Like a sliver, like a sliver difference. You can start over or you can just kind of do that. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's have another box, um, like next to this guy. Finding that perspective line. Let me see. Pulling that back over here. It's not quite a line with that, let me see. A lot of these are like fractions of a centimeter different. It's close, but this should line up. This should line up with this. I'm kind of forcing it right now because I started that weird. Pull this up. Let's pull this off that direction. Pull it up. And it's kind of up to me how, how big I want this box, really. I'm going to pick an arbitrary point, like here. And I'm going to follow these two, stay in the lanes. I'm going to pull this back. See this right, about right here. And these two lines are going to meet there. Well, this has to be similar to that one. So, you get the idea. Um, a big part of this, I'm just going to do this see-through factor, why not, just for myself. For I mean, for the video, I guess. A big part of doing this is to kind of organize your mind. Um, it's, it's to train your mind to kind of see in 3D. And this exercise has been, for me personally, the best exercise for cleaning my lines up mostly. Uh, even though it's kind of like shaky right now. But cleaning my lines up and, uh, you know, like for example, doing this, like going over and over that, it's kind of been hard. You know, it's kind of hard. So that's really helped. It's another way. To, it's just another exercise, but it's been one of the best for cleaning my lines up, being super careful, uh, thinking about what I'm doing before I do it. That's a big one. Um, and it also just kind of uh, auto, uh, it helps me think of many objects within the 3D space. You know what I mean? Um, and right now I'm drawing these boxes looking down on them. You can draw it looking up as well using this exact same grid. You know what I mean? Like this 
could be like this could be the the bottom right here like let's just imagine this could be the bottom of some sort of other block you know that's completely different size you know that could be the well it would have to be here that that could be the bottom and then that, maybe this could you could shade that in maybe that, like you see that as a bottom kind of you know i'm taking i'm just taking that box and kind of <laughs> Like I'm, ch I'm changing it. It's like a totally on a different plane, you know. But realistically, you're looking down on this box. I hope that exercise makes sense because this exercise in school, like I said, helped me so much. It was like the, like the, the, the exercise. Um, I would recommend you do it with pen. Like I said, that helps a lot. Um, do them all over the place. Do different sizes as well. You can do giant ones too. Like I said, maybe try to make them connect. I think this video has gone on long enough. And uh, hopefully understand that. I would do about 10 boxes. You know what I mean? Get that grid, put a piece of paper over it, and try to do 10 boxes so you understand. Like there's two vanishing points off the page. And uh, you're trying to put these things in that world, in that space. You know, incorrect perspective. Um, that's about it, guys. If you have any questions, because I'm sure there will be, post them below and I'll try to answer them, okay? Any questions you guys ask? If it's like a big one, a repeating one, I will uh, make a full other video on it. But anyways, check this. Uh, check out the next videos. Uh, I did also make this into a um, playlist, so the playlist link should be in the you know comments and uh, should be in the description section. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time.